and welcome back to Catharsis Inc. And blessed Letha, the mother has provided us with such a beautiful summer day today. I believe the high is going to be 98 and there's a really nice breeze going on. So to celebrate the Sabbath today, I think I want to do a little bit of baking, some crafting, and then I want to end the evening with a fire, making s'mores with the kids. So I'm really excited to spend this day with you. So first we're going to start with some baking and when I was looking up recipes to make I really wanted to incorporate items that were in abundance right now. So I found some strawberry scones that I want to make and also I'm going to garnish it with some chamomile cream and that sounds absolutely delicious. I can't wait to try them. I'm a little nervous since I've never made them before and my baking isn't the greatest but I'm hoping they turn out all right because they sound absolutely delicious. So let's go ahead and get started with the scones. So for the strawberry scones you will need two and a half cups all-purpose flour, two tablespoons granulated sugar, one tablespoon of baking powder, one fourth teaspoon of salt, half a cup or eight tablespoons of unsalted butter that is chilled and diced, one cup chopped fresh strawberries, two eggs lightly beaten, a half a cup of heavy whipping cream that's chilled, one tablespoon of milk to brush on the top of the scones, and half a tablespoon of coarse sugar to sprinkle on the top of the scones. Before you start your scones, you'll want to preheat your oven to 400 degrees. Then, in a large bowl, stir together two and a half cups of flour, two tablespoons of sugar, one tablespoon of baking powder, and one fourth teaspoon of salt. Then add a half a cup of diced butter and cut it into flour using a pastry blender until mixture resembles pea-sized coarse crumbs. Then gently toss in your chopped strawberries. Make an indentation in the center and set the bowl aside. In a second small mixing bowl, beat two eggs, then stir in half a cup of heavy cream. Add the egg mixture to flour mixture and use a large spoon to gently stir just until moistened. Do not over mix. Place dough onto generously floured sheet of parchment paper. Pull dough together and shape it into a 3 4 inch thick circle. Cut into 12 equal wedges and pull them apart slightly, at least a half an inch apart. Brush wedges with 1 tablespoon of milk. Then sprinkle with coarse sugar and bake at 400 degrees Fahrenheit for 15 to 16 minutes or until puffed and golden. Now while the scones are in the oven, we're going to start working on the chamomile cream. So for the cream, you will need 1 cup chilled heavy cream, 2 best quality chamomile tea bags, or you can use two teaspoons of dried chamomile flowers, and then one tablespoon of sugar. First, heat half a cup of cream in a small saucepan over medium heat until bubbles form around edges of the pan. Then remove your pan from the heat and add the chamomile, letting it steep for 20 minutes. After it steeps, transfer it to a medium bowl cover it and then chill it until cold about two hours. Next, strain chamomile cream through a fine mesh sieve into a medium bowl. Add remaining half cup cream and remaining one tablespoon of sugar. Using an electric mixer, beat chamomile cream until soft peaks form.
we're going to start the first craft. So you'll need one of these DIY wood frames from Dollar Tree. I believe I had gotten this last year, but I think they came out with them again this year. So it's in the shape of a sun and it comes with wood pegs so you can stand it up if you want to use it as a frame. But today I'm going to be DIYing it into a sun catcher. So in addition to the frame, you'll need some contact paper and this I got from Dollar Tree as well. You'll also need some dried flowers. So first what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint the sun and I'm going to go with, I think this gold spray paint, I think that'll be really pretty. So we won't need this back piece for what we're doing. And these you can actually pull off of there because we won't need those either. But I'm going to take this outside to spray paint the top and the bottom of the frame. And then we'll bring it back inside to start our craft. Now that the paint has dried, I went ahead and drilled a complete hole through this hole here. Originally, it was only drilled a little bit so the peg would fit in like this and the stand could sit up like this so i went ahead and drilled all the way through so we'd have something to hang our sun catcher from now we're going to use the back of the frame as a template to cut out two pieces of this contact paper so i'm just going to use a pen and trace two circles out Then I'm going to go ahead and cut these out and I'll show you what we're going to do next. Now we're going to take one of the circles and unstick it from the paper and lay it sticky side up. And then we are going to start laying our dried flowers on the sticky part. And then you're going to take your second circle and lay it sticky side down on top of your flowers. And then we're going to take some super glue and glue down this piece inside the frame here. And you might have to trim it down depending. Yeah, it looks like I'm gonna have to trim it down a little bit. And this is how it turned out. I think it is so pretty. I know it's dark inside the house here, so I'll also take it outside and show you the beautiful gold color of the sun frame. But yeah, I absolutely love this. It's so gorgeous. And the best thing about it is the center, of course, is customizable. So you could do all kinds of different flowers and even glitter. I think that would be really fun too. For our next craft, we're going to be making a sun wreath. And I actually found this idea on Pinterest, so I'll throw up a picture here. And I, as soon as I saw this, I thought it was so beautiful and would be perfect for Letha. So I went ahead and scavenged some sticks and what better way to honor the mother than using the resources that she has given us, especially in our own backyards. So first, I cut out a ring shape out of cardboard. So this is going to be the base of our wreath. And then I'm going to start hot gluing the sticks around the cardboard ring. But this is how the wreath has turned out so far. It took me about 30 minutes 
As you can see, there's clumps of glue everywhere. It took a lot of glue to adhere this. And as you can see, there's some white cardboard showing through. To prevent that, before you start gluing on the sticks, you can always paint the cardboard ring a nice brown color if you wanted to. I'm not too worried about it because I'm gonna put the fabric roses on top of those specific spots. So let's go ahead and start our roses now. So for our roses, I have this beautiful bright yellow fabric that I'm gonna be using. I've never made these roses before. Apparently they're called rosettes. And from what I've seen on YouTube, you cut long strips of fabric and then roll it up. And as you roll it up, you twist it as well. So I'm gonna try doing that and see what it looks like. I think I'm gonna start with five roses at first and see how that looks on the wreath and then we'll go from there. But let me go ahead and start cutting strips of this fabric. And this is how it turned out. I think it's really cute. I just, at the end of the fabric there, I did a small dab of hot glue to hold it in place. So let me do a couple more of these and then we can start hot gluing them onto the wreath. Now that I have all the roses complete, I'm going to start decorating the wreath. And I wouldn't be a true forest witch if I didn't put some moss on the wreath. So I have some moss and I'm gonna go ahead and put some of that on before I put the roses on. So let me go ahead and do that. So this is what it looks like with the moss on. I think it looks really pretty. So now I'm gonna start adding the rosettes to it. And this is how it turned out. I went ahead and put it on my front door. I think it is perfect for the Sabbat and to keep out all summer long. So the kids and I decided it's way too hot to have a fire and we're actually under a heat advisory, so better safe than sorry. We don't wanna start any wildfires, but the scones were absolutely delicious. I'm so proud of myself on how good I did. I didn't burn them, they weren't undercooked, they were absolutely perfect. And I'm also really happy at how the crafts turned out. I think they're so beautiful and they are the perfect Letha craft. Thank you all so much for hanging out with me today. I had a beautiful day. If you enjoyed this video, definitely give it a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks, guys. Bye!